This week with the queen of controversy is Cake King. Important because I know his lifestyle. What does me making your cake? What does a gay cake look like? There's a lot of women walking around here in Jackson. A lot of them who would never tell you that they're HIV positive that they got it from. So me. last week we went into um, a discussion on sex and parenting skills and what methods you can apply to your child's life in, in order to make a difference on their sexual desires and their sexual behaviors. This week, I wanted to focus on another issue that's very prevalent in Jackson, Mississippi, um, which is homosexuality. How do you deal with uh, having a family member that's hom homosexual? How do you deal with accepting those who are homosexual? And most importantly, how do you deal with if you're struggling with homosexuality? Um, you have a lot of people who will easily hide who they are because they don't want the, 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 the public to see who they really are. And as a result, it, it hurts us because when you, when you hide who you are, it can increase HIV rates, it can increase the chance of getting AIDS, and a lot of women, and, it, and this is actually statistical, but a lot of women in Jackson are HIV positive because of their husbands having uh, male partners. And so we need to raise awareness on these topics, which is why I think I have the perfect person today, Mr. K. King. Um, he owns his own caking company and a brilliant, talented guy who has the most humbling heart and does not mind telling you how he feels or what's on his mind. And he's just such a beautiful person. And so we're going to have an in-depth, intimate conversation with him and just get it up from his perspective. Was it hard for him growing up? How did his parents take it? What were some of the challenges? he faced um, coming out and starting the business and maybe give some insight to those who are watching who are gay who do not know how to come out because they are ashamed of what others may say and um, so let's go and talk to him and queen of controversy hello everyone I am here today with mr. Kate King himself I'm going to let him introduce himself, but as I mentioned earlier in our introduction, this discussion will be um, primarily around homosexuality, how to deal with homosexuality, um, what are some ways that those who are struggling with homosexuality can manage um, the, the, the trials or the issues that come with being openly gay, and, and also how to still become successful, how to not let your lifestyle dictate your path. And so uh, I'm going to let him introduce himself, and then we'll get into a really great discussion. So, hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> great. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, my name is Jeremy. Everybody knows me as Kate King. I'm originally from uh, One Island, Mississippi, down in the Delta, country boy. Mm -hmm. uh, I moved to Jackson about three years ago when I started the business here. Okay. Okay. So um, first, let's start off a little bit. So, Kate King. Everybody knows Kate King. You can't go anywhere in Jackson without hearing Kate King. I remember being Miss Jackson State, and as a matter of fact, you made one of my cakes when I was Miss Jackson State. It was the cup. Oh, it was so good. You did, yeah. Because somebody they wouldn't let me let somebody else make it. They was like, no, he's doing it. So it was so good. But I just want to let you know that. But um, just kind of tell everybody a little bit where your passion came from and where did your passion to you know for bakery and et cetera. Well, uh, it's kind of crazy how we got started. Uh, I was actually, I was in school, uh, English education major at the W, or MUW in Columbus. And um, I was going through a bad breakup. And um, it was just, it was real rough for me. I had uh, attempted suicide, and I was in the hospital for a couple of days, well, almost about a week. And once I got everything out and got my mind straight and everything, uh, a friend of mine, uh, he's from Jackson, he, we was walking around Walmart. We went through, you know, they, had, they just started putting a little cake decorating the aisles in Walmart. And he was like, man, you can do this. You always cooking, you know. You should try this. So he bought the kit and was like, you know what, just try it. So I started watching YouTube videos, um, you know, just different things. I, you know, trying different recipes. Not really, well, I really wasn't into it. Um, and I got asked to do a cake for my fraternity. I'm a Sigma. Yes. <laughs> I am Greek. Oh. <laughs> uh, and they asked me to do a cake for our chapter, uh, one of our chapter programs. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do anything. You know, I'm not really, it's not really something I'm, I can do. Uh, it was just something I just try to keep my mind off things. Um, but I en ended up doing the cake, and from there, people started seeing stuff. So I started watching more and more videos on YouTube. Uh, pretty much self-taught everything. 
I didn't get to take any classes because around that time, you know, it really wasn't anything, especially not a black man baking cakes. You didn't really have anybody to look to. So YouTube pretty much taught me everything, and I kind of went from there. And just playing around and doing cakes with just family and friends turned into a you know a full out passion. And I, I was more into that than I was my studies when I was in school. But I mean, exactly. it worked out. And you said something that I, I want to touch on. You talked about your struggle with a relationship yeah. and, and how with that struggle, um, you had an issue where you could, you tried to attempt right. suicide. Um, I want to kind of go into depth, into the depths of what were you thinking at that time? Because not only, I want you to know like your story is, is very, like it's, it's so uplifting and such a blessing because you were at the bottom, yeah. you know, seriously, and, and our mental health is something that's very important. Yeah. You were at, time. Exactly. You were at the bottom, you know, from a mental health perspective. And now look at you, you know, and I want you to kind of encourage those who are listening. Tell them about that struggle, because I mentor a lot of young ladies who tried to commit suicide. Yeah. You'll be surprised in Baton Rouge and Louisiana, yeah, uh, Baton Rouge and Jackson, me going back and forth from the hospital, you know, from the, my young girls I mentor. How did you go from that that position, and what what were some of the, the elements of some of the people in your life, or whatever it was, that inspired you to keep going? Well, I think the biggest thing, um, like I tell everybody, um, my primary focus is God. Uh, it took a lot of prayer to get me out of the place that I was in. Um, and I know people try to, they try not to mix the whole thing with being homosexual and being a Christian and all that, and that's a whole other topic. But I mean, um, my faith kept me grounded. Uh, and if it wasn't for my faith and, you know, just some caring people that I had in my life, I, you know, I probably would have just kept going off the deep end and just, you know, fell into a deeper depression. Uh, but, you know, I had friends that just kept pushing me to say, hey, man, you got to do this for you. You know, you got to finish school. You know, you got to do this for your family. You know, most importantly, you got to do it for you. Was your was your partner a male or female? He was male. He was male. Yeah. Okay. What age did you know? I'm gay. I'm tired of finding yeah. it. This is my life. What age uh, did wow. you make that decision? Well, I think I think it's one of those things. Where I always do. Um, if you've seen um, the new show Empire. Mm -hmm. How um, I think what's the by, by the way, name? wonderful show. Yeah, I love uh, the show because uh, mm -hmm. it really talks about real stuff. Exactly. And um, I, I remember the the whole thing when they first started the show, and it, the show. I, that's the reason why I kept watching this because the dude came out uh, in the heels and the scarf and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, I was young, and I remember that same thing. And my uncle beat my ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I remember that like I still shit. I can still feel it. <laughs> but he, he, you know, he, he was like, you know, oh, you're going to be a boy and such and such. And I used to always get in my, my great grandparents raised me. And I used to always get in my great grandmother's stuff, you know, playing her jury. I mean, but I never wanted to be like, you know, I, I never been into the whole thing of, you know, males dressing like a woman and all that. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was just something I guess I knew at an early age, just, you know, it was just something I was attracted to. Um, I came out to my mom my sophomore year in high school. So I was like, so I was you young. Were, you were. I was about fifteen. 15. Yeah. yeah, and it was rough. I mean, it was it was hard. How I did thank she God for my. She she, she she didn't take away. Okay. Because <laughs> I was the one. Um, I've always been the one that I've always dressed like this. I've always been well known. I was prom king, homecoming king in my mm -hmm. school. Um, so everybody knew me. So my mom was like, you know, it's just a phase you're going through. But my stepdad was always so encouraging. He always was there. He was like, you know, just let him be who he is. You know, I wasn't this flaming dude out there. Exactly. It was just, I still had, I had a liking for dudes. I dated girls, and I was very honest with them, just like I am, you know, today. Everybody know about me. But um, I just feel like that was really important to just be who I was. And my mom had a hard time. She still battles with it, but she's a little bit more accepting now. Well, I don't know if you know this, but I come from a family that's full of homosexuals. My little brother is gay. And uh, he, twenty one. Oh. Twenty. <laughs> My little brother is gay, <laughs> and, <laughs> and he actually does makeup for okay. uh, the girls at Black Diamond. Okay. You know, he 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 is really good in cosmetics. Like that is his, his his thing, makeup artist. And I remember being a little girl, and for so long, K King, I blamed me for his homosexuality because. My older brothers never played with me. They never gave me any attention. Man, but I had control over the younger one. Uh -huh. And I would make him 
play with me, play, you know, if it was house, if it was Barbie dolls, if it was let's go outside and make up some songs, you know, yeah. so, you know. You made that boy game. <laughs> <laughs> and he and you know I always call my mom and be like I'm sorry like girl you ain't you know but you know I can remember him coming out well first of all let us let me say this we knew we yeah. knew because we knew because Daniel would he just he was that spirit he was very creative like you know you just yeah. you see you see those traits in him yeah. and he was just always on point but I remember when he came out uh, to my mom and I think he came out first on a Facebook status. He said, I'm tired of hiding it. Wow. Know? And somebody, well, I guess one of my aunts or some, you know, family mess. And, and yeah. that's another subject that I really want to touch on. I am so tired of gossip within the each other. Yeah. You know, we should be uplifting each other yeah. in this, this that's part. A big thing. But uh, yeah, one of them called and said, you know, well, Damien came out and she just was kind of embarrassed. What do you, Wendy, and but your, you and your mom still have a good relationship. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 I'm a mama's and, and, boy. And, he, and he's definitely a mama's boy too. But what do you think was that was that point for your mom when she realized I have to let you be you, Ooh. even though I don't agree with what you because yeah, even because, and she said those mm-hmm. exact words. Mm-hmm. She, she said those exact words before as you know with me as an adult. Um, but I think my mom was very, very, she's always been very protective of me. And she told me this because she's always seen so much in me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so even when I was young and I was in high school, you know, dating different guys or whatever, she was always, she was called, she would constantly call. If I left the house, she was calling and texting me, you know, you know, where you at? How long are you going to be gone? You know, she wanted to meet whoever it was. But she was really, really hard on me when it came to this lifestyle. Not knowing, she didn't know anything about the lifestyle, but she knew me and she was just very protective of me. And, you know, I appreciate it now because I'm more guarded when it comes to, you know, bringing people into my life. And especially with having a business, you have to be careful. I you know, agree. everybody is not going to respect your brand or your name as much as you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she's really, she's still been hard on me, even as an adult, you know, with the guys who I date. You know, being careful who I date or who I bring in. Who you? Now, this is going to be a really good question because I don't mind telling you. I've dated guys who I found out was gay and um, it's, yeah. it's serious and when I tell you image doesn't mean anything Ooh. you will be surprised ladies and gentlemen the most masculine whatever persona they put on that that just defines a man you never it's judge true. a book by its cover this is true. so my question for you is when you talk to if, if you've ever talked to a heterosexual male do you feel insulted that they that they want to talk to you and they want to be with somebody who's open about who, who they are, mm. but you have to hide being with them? Mm. Well, for me personally, I don't date DL men, period. Okay. I don't like DL guys. If you follow me on Facebook, you will know I'm very, I go hard on DL men because, for one, it's the DL men, the married men, the preachers, the deacons, the bishops, all of those people, the politicians, the mayors, the, the you know everybody who is into that, and you know they they feel these people are power. They feel like they're power. They can control people or say or do what they want to do and get away with it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of guys who date these people, they're okay with being in the background because they they feel like they're dating a person of power. Well, I I feel like I have that same power. You know, God's giving us all a power, and I, I just can't date somebody that I have to hide. I, I I can't stand it. I don't so see it. So you never fell in love with somebody. That was deal. Yeah. No. Uh. Uh-uh. That is awesome. <laughs> I am so glad. Yeah. I am so glad that you made that. No. That I I've never been into that. If you can't bring me around, and I got this thing where if I can't really, if I if I can't go to church with you, then we probably we really ain't gonna make it. Because you're slowing me down. Yeah. We. I mean, we can't. We, if we can't serve God together, I mean, we can do everything else together. So you know, we can lay up all the time, but we can't go to church. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can't pray together. No, nah, it ain't gonna work. That, that makes sense. I'm glad you touched on that. What advice would you give mothers out there? Mothers come to me all the time. Sarah, my child is gay. I don't know how I'm going to take this. You know, I'm like, mm. it's almost like they're in denial, even with the, the parent and the sexual the discussion that we had last week. Nobody commented on it. They're in denial, but their daughters are coming to me. And they're depending on other women, but they can't come to their mom. Their mom should be their primary source. Yeah. So what is some advice to parents 
who know their child is gay, don't want to accept it, mistreat their child, bring their child down for their for their lifestyle. What is some advice you would give them based off of what you've been through? Well, first of all, um, I'll speak directly. It's not about you. Uh, it's their life. You know, I, a lot of times parents get caught up in, well, that's my child and, you know, I want the best for them. It's okay to want what's best for your child, but you have to let your child live and make their own mistakes. So if they, it may be a phase that they're going through. I've known people that once they got into the lifestyle, they didn't like it. You know, and they just left it alone completely. But you got to let people make their own mistakes. You know, whether it be your child, you, you know, your nephew, your niece, you know, let them live and make their own mistakes. I mean, it's so much other stuff that's going on in society to, you know, to try to focus on that one topic, you know, that one subject. Let these people live. Can, can I tell you what's a curse, what I believe is a curse in the black community? Image. Yeah, it is. Image has, image has destroyed us. It, is, it really has. And as the, the biggest thing for me with the whole thing with owning just caking was I never wanted to be put into a box or, you know, don't, don't you know, stigmatize me with saying that all gay men are like this. All, all gay men are not flaming. You know, we ain't all walking around, you know, with our hair, you know, down our back or, you know, tight clothes. There's a lot of us that walk around just like I look like an everyday man or a corporate man. I mean, everybody's not like that. So don't put me in a box that just because I'm black and I'm gay that I'm supposed to look a certain way because I'm not. And I hate when people say, oh, my God, you don't even look gay. Well, what does looking gay look like? Because everybody has a, a different persona. I may say that you don't look straight because you come out the house with rollers in your hair. You come out with flip-flops on. That's not how I perceive a woman should look. Okay, and let me tell you, just from traveling a lot and going to a lot of professional development conferences, I run into a lot of LGBT. That is a very controversial yeah. and hot topic right now in today's society. Because what's finding, what they're finding out is that a lot of homosexualities are very talented, are very mm -hmm. successful. And you have these oppo opposing opinions that are saying, since they're like that, let's stick to the Bible. Let's stick to yeah. what we've been doing. And, that, and as a result, we're, we're not only demotivating them, but we're losing revenue and we're losing uh, productivity that could be implemented into our cities and to right. our communities because we're bringing these people down. So um, my my thing is let's 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 kind of touch a little bit on because I'm the queen of controversy. I just want to talk. Let's we're gonna get it out there. Let's get it out there. Let's talk a little bit about the spiritual aspect and how people will will judge you because. Your issue is not their issue, right. and they will automatically go back to and, and try it to pull the scripture this. forward. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, like I tell a lot of people, um, me being with a man is no different from you cheating on your wife or you cheating on your husband. Um, you you took a vow uh, to be with your husband and, and be with your husband only, and your husband is out trying to be with other men. So, I mean, don't come to me quoting scriptures with me. When you're not living your life right, no sin is greater than the next. We've all heard it. If you're gonna you're gonna bring me a scripture, I'm gonna bring you one back. And I mean, I just I hate when people try to, because uh, a lot of people, a lot of gay people have left the church. I read statuses all the time about people leaving the church because you know pastor preached about preached preached about gay people. Well, I'm not going nowhere. I mean, if you're gonna preach about it, that's fine. I mean, you when you get through preaching about it, okay, I'm gonna say amen. I have to. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I can't. I'm yeah. not gonna leave just yeah. because you preached about about my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But you also, I, I know that you've talked about the, the men who are sleeping with other women, or you know, you touched on everybody. Mm -hmm. So don't, I'm not, I don't feel like you're just singling me out. Mm -hmm. My problem is the, the, with these pastors that get in the pulpit and use their positions of power to bring down these gay people. But you have a boyfriend out in the audience. That's where my problem comes in. Is or you got, uh, uh, you know, this punk leading, your, leading the choir. You know, that's 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 what I'm talking. About, the one that everybody know about. Mm -hmm. So don't try to condemn everybody else out there. When you got, as long as they doing something for you, they okay. As long as they cutting your hair or doing your white hair or making your floral arrangements for the, you know, pastor's anniversary or back in the kitchen cooking food, they okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my, okay, um, yeah. I need to that I, I needed to meditate on that because <laughs> your library stays open for a reason. Oh, so and fine. and that, that was that was good. Okay. Talk a little bit about first of all, um, I've met your pastor. Mm -hmm. I am so 
we Jackson needs him. Yeah. And I will look into the camera and say this. Jackson and his, his name is Pastor, Pastor Rich. Rich. Pastor Rich is a phenomenal leader. He doesn't care what you think about his congregation. He doesn't care what you think about him. Him yeah. and his wife are doing some phenomenal things really in Jackson. Are. Look them up. Really are. Those are the leaders that we need. That man is not afraid. And you know what? What I've noticed about what I've noticed about his church is that he has a lot of homosexuality. He has a lot of homosexuals in yeah, his church. Yeah, it's people that come from all walks of life. And I think that's what drew me to it. Because it's, it's such a loving church. You know, they I, I felt the love when I got to the parking lot. When I got in my car, people greeted me at my car. You know, the, the parking attendants were speaking to you as you were parking. You know, that's what really drew me there. The first day I went, I joined the church. And, you know, that's kind of hard for a black church. You know, and, you know most people, they wait a while. They're kind of scared to take their walk. But, I mean, it was, so, it was such a comfortable environment that it made you want to be there. Tell me what was going through your mind when you got out of the car. Like, where, where well, I had spoke to him already. You know, he had, you know he had came to me personally and was like, you know, I want to invite you out. I seen you. I had made a post about how I had, you know, had been to church in about six months, which is really hard for me mm -hmm. because I grew up in the church. I've always been in the church. I've always been a choir boy. Mm -hmm. I've, you know, done everything in school with choirs. So me not going to church was a big thing. But I got tired of it. every time I went to the church in Jackson. Every sermon was about homosexuality mm -hmm. or we need more men in the community. No, we need the men to stop cheating on their wives, too. Mm -hmm. We need the men to be prevalent in the household. Because if the man was there, 9 out of 10, maybe these boys wouldn't grow up to be the way they are. Because they got a man present to show them how to be a man. So, you know, stop singling out all these people in there because of who they are. You need to bring, put, bring the men back. And you said something about your pastor. He reached out to you. Yeah, he reached out to me. That That, that, is, that is a leader. You yeah. know, um, I would... You know, we need we need people to stop trying to be nice and you need to be yeah. effective. Yes. I'm so tired of the nice image, the nice role. Like we really need to get more people to be effective leaders. You you want to be neutral and you mm -hmm. want to be passive. But with him bringing, let me say this to Pastor Rich if he's watching, for you bringing your, uh, K. King to your church, you actually, people saw who are just like K. King, who have that same personality, Brought so many other people yeah, there. They feel comfortable I wanted to come there. to the church because I, mean, they I saw feel so you there. I mean, for me yes. to be bragging on church, for me to brag on a church, period, mm -hmm. is a big thing. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, well, of course, with me being who I am and everybody knowing who I am, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, they're going to know. So it's going to get back to the congregation on the past. Hey, you know, he owned a business, but he's also gay. And I've heard things, you know, I've heard different pastors say, I don't know why y'all go out there supporting his business and he's gay. Well, I mean, I don't understand why your members come to your church when you in my inbox either. Mm -hmm. But I'm not posting about you. So, I mean, I, you, you can't you can't do that. And you got, I always tell people, you got to be careful who you put your mouth on. Literally, be careful who you put your mouth on. Because you don't know who you're talking about and you don't know who I know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I, I hear that all the time. I hear these people saying so many things about, you know, different people who are gay or, you know, just because he has a business, you know, I'm not supporting him because I know his lifestyle. What does me making your cake, what does a gay cake look like? And that's one of the reasons why I kept going because I had a person that tell me, well, ain't nobody going to buy your cakes because they, your cakes are so flamboyant. Well, what does a flamboyant cake look like? Nobody but I, I mean, what is, and I could have took that and just stopped doing what I was doing, but I kept going. That let that be my motivation. And your church plays a, a big role in your spirit. Most definitely, most definitely. Um, so tell us what are some you do a lot out of the community too for the community yeah. and that's another that's like with your what was it wigs for cancer the uh, king's wigs for cancer, king's uh, for cancer. Uh, the cake of wigs foundation I will provide cakes for underprivileged kids uh, but not just kids you know there's a lot of grown grown ups that just have never had a birthday cake or never had a birthday party so I mean it's just my main focus is to try to give back to people. And, and make people feel the same joy I feel when I see the look on their face when they come and get a cake. And everybody, you know, we can be real, everybody can't afford a $150 cake. You know, I mean, so it's sometimes it's good to just give back. And I don't care if you are taking a loss in something. You know, it's always good to show people that you are still human. And that's why my life, people, they get on to me all the time and say, I make too much of my life, you know, public. But I, I feel like I'm relatable. You know, I go through real issues just like other people go through. If you look on my Facebook page a couple of months back, I had an issue with a fraternity thing. 
you know, somebody had said I named you as their child's father. And I mean, that was a big thing. I mean, I go through the same issues everybody else goes through. But you know, I got a lot of uh, backfire from my, me, me and my mom had a conversation. I don't know if you got a chance to listen to it, but we was talking about my actual experience growing up and what I dealt with as a teen and how I came to her when I told her I wanted to have sex and how she told me about birth control and how she would find these text messages in my phone. And the people, I can count the number of people on, on hand that has something negative to say, and I can't count the number of messages that I've received saying, Sarah, I'm addicted to sex and I'm 16 years old. I can't talk to my mama. Sarah, you know, I'm, I'm going through the same thing. My mama won't even let me come to her and tell her if my body is doing something different because she, come, she becomes so defensive. So don't tell me that I'm telling too much of my business right. when I'm reaching out to those who are somebody. hurting. The, yeah. the first time I made a post about my uh, the suicide attempt, I had a young girl that came to me, and she's actually into cakes and everything too. And she said, "I have been said before I watched your video, uh, or I, she was reading a status or something." And she said, "I was actually contemplating committing suicide." And I'm so glad that she is still doing cakes right now. She's getting ready to graduate from college. I mean, she's just doing amazing things with her life. And she said that status changed her life because she was ready to kill herself. You know, she was, you know, she was battling, she was, uh, had a girlfriend, she didn't know how to tell her parents, and then when she did tell her parents, you know, they just pretty much just, just kicked out. You know, like just the typical black parents, you know, they always, you can't just keep kicking these kids out, you know, putting them out just because you don't agree with their lifestyle. I agree. You know, you didn't always do things about a group. And then you got the, and then you got the, 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 the Sally and, and Mike, that couple, trying to keep up with the Joneses. Mm. So those are the ones that's coming to you yep. telling you about yours because they live their life like this. Mm -hmm. and so you have to live your life like this if you want to make it yep. because you don't want to upset nobody. Man, let me tell you something. When you're serious about something, when your passion, your heart is in something, you will lose whatever, yeah. whoever it, it doesn't to matter. get where you want it to go. It doesn't even matter. I mean, you're going to lose a lot of, you're going to lose a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen people in my life come and go. I've had friends you know, and, so, and people always say, well, you let the business change you or the money, you know, the amount of money you You're may change to. you. I said, no, the money didn't change me. It changed the people around me. Mm -hmm. It just changed my environment. Exactly. That my business changed the people that, you know, do that I, do I cling to. You know, I cling to people who are goal-oriented, who are spirit-minded. But I also, I haven't forgotten about the people who were just like me. And that's why I give back so much because everybody needs somebody. You need to meet somebody who is like you. You need to be able to relate to somebody. And my prayer every day is, Lord, keep me humble and relatable. I always, you know, keep me where I'm grounded. And I never forget where I came from. But keep me relatable where people can still relate to me. I can make funny videos that people can relate to. And I can be serious and people still relate to me. Well, I appreciate your, your, your effort and your leadership. And especially what you're doing in the community. And... Um, um, anything else that you want to add before, like whatever's on your mind, whatever you know. Next week we're talking about. I'm I'm going to interview um, a homosexual who is married, you know. And that's the thing about being relatable. People will come to you. And so this man wants to come to me and share his story. I'm going to interview him. What is something that if he's watching this and he's going to prepare for that next week? What is something that you want to, advice you want to give him about? What is something he needs to touch on? Well, first of all, he need to come out of the closet because uh, what's done in the dark surely does come to the light. You may think that the person who you are sleeping with, you can trust them or you know that they have your best interest in heart. But I guarantee you the first time you piss them off, it ain't nothing like pissing off a gay man. He going to tell all your business, it, it's especially an out gay man. He going to tell all your business. He gonna, you know, he going to make you feel like that he should be the one, only one. He don't care about your wife. He don't care about your status in the community. You need to be honest with yourself first and then be honest with your wife because it's going to come out. And I mean, it's, it's, I've seen so many women who have come to me and say, you know, I found out that my mate was gay. What do I do? Before or after you kick his ass. Because he should have came to you ahead of time and said, did you, this ain't just something you woke up and said, hey, I want to go sleep with a man. You've been had these feelings. So why bring them into a relationship? And then you have kids that are involved. You mess up these kids' life. You mess up. I've seen homes that have literally been destroyed. I, I, I know women who have walked in on their husbands in the bed with another man, in their bed. I don't even know how they're still alive. I agree. 
I mean, as a woman, I mean, women are the most strongest creatures alive. Well, but, but let me say this. Let me make sure. Women don't speak out about that issue. No. Women who have been through it do not come together. They as won't. A team they won't tell because they don't. Want, they don't want to feel embarrassed. Oh, their image. They, back they, it's, image. It's back to that image thing. You don't want to feel embarrassed because your man is gay. No, you need to tell somebody. Exactly. Because he may leave you and go on and do the next one the same way. It is always the ones, you know, they try to hide this and, you know, they try to be so big and tough. You know, and I, those would be the same ones I just said the other day. Y'all, these hardest men who, you know, got all these women out here, them the ones who are bottom. If you don't know what a bottom is, that's the men that get... Excuse my language, but those are the men who are bent over. Okay. I mean, this is this is keeping real, fair. I mean, you know, it, it, it's True. sad. It's yeah. really sad, and I get really upset when I find, you know, when I see a DL man, and I and I, especially the ones that I know, you know, you got a good woman at home. Mm-hmm. I know one right now. It's been on the tip of my fingertips every day to send that woman a message and say, I know it. I done seen your husband with another man, mm-hmm. but he gonna have to be the one. But I'm gonna throw enough shade on Facebook that she gonna figure it out eventually. <laughs> You are amazing. Okay, I just love your person. You, you, but you, you're honest and you're real. Yeah, I'm, and I'm honest because I wish that people would get into their mind that you can't go through life hurting people. You know, the, the emotions are real. People can carry depression for years. People wake up one morning and say they might want to kill everybody in their house and then kill themselves, all because of one person's actions. So you always got to remember that your action is going to, you know, possibly spark a reaction from somebody else that could be a, you know, a domino effect over a lot of people. You know, that's just how HIV starts. You know, you may think it's just one innocent night. Hey, I'm just going out and do this with this dude, but I'm going to come home to my wife. But that dude didn't tell you what he had. And that's how it starts. There's a lot of women walking around here in Jackson. A lot of them who would never tell you that they're HIV positive. They got it from a man. They got it from their baby daddy. He a guy out of jail. Or, you know, the man I trusted, my husband. I'm glad that Tyler Perry touches on a lot of these movies like this. I agree. You know, it, you know, just putting it out there. One, but I mean, one it's good. Temptation, yeah, right? temptation. That's a good example. But I mean, it's it's one thing to hear it on a movie, you know, or see it on a on a big screen. But people need to see some real life things. Mm-hmm. It's like some of y'all women need to wake up and just tell the truth. Like, yeah, this man did this to me. Bl- blast him. I mean, he'll realize that what he did was he made a big mistake. I mean, I, I promise you, public shame is the, is the best type of shame. When you blast somebody publicly, then they let them know. You ain't learned a lesson until you've been blasted publicly. Mm. I, I hope you've enjoyed Can you please tell them where to get your cake? Uh, this, this has been so good. This has been great. So tell them, tell them where, uh, where they could find your your uh, cakes. Well, you can find me anywhere. Um, uh, Facebook, uh, Sippy Cake King, uh, Cake is with a Cake. Uh, we're in Pearl in the Bright Center. Um, we're right behind the Trustmark Bank, 418 Robert Street uh, in Pearl. Uh, we open Tuesday through Saturday. Come out. I mean, we have a variety of treats. we got an awesome staff. I mean, we tell everybody, you may come in as a customer, but I guarantee you're going to leave his family. Mm-hmm. My clients, they know me on a personal level. I've been to the hospital and visited my clients' kids. I mean, you know, they know me. And everybody that comes in here is like family. You know, they don't mind. They might come in here and buy a cupcake, but they'll sit here two or three hours just talking. That's, that's awesome. And that's your spirit and that's your personality. And we need more people like this in our communities. And so, uh, once again, I want to thank Kate King for um, his effort to come and talk to me today about these issues as we talked about homosexuality and owning a business and how to be who you really are, you know, and not let uh, anyone stop you from being who you are. Um, So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kate King himself. Um, I will put his information in the comment box below. Feel free to um, comment and share questions or concerns, and I'll get back to them as soon as possible. Thank you.